Well, hello hackers, how is it going? And the last one, no other track at the same time than me, so I'm feeling the pressure. And be, be, after this talk, you have the party, so I try to be as fast as I can. So, first of all, thank you for, for having the time to be here. And this is the, first, the third time that I'm speaking here in, in this conference, which is very good, because that means that I'm still the chief data officer of Telefonica. I've been the, the chief data officer of Telefonica for the almost four years. And today I'm going to, to talk about things that we are doing in, in that area. So th uh, three years ago, when I was here at first time, I was explaining what, is, what was our vision about data, privacy, and, and, the, and the usage of big data technologies inside Telefonica. Last year I was talking about how we were thinking about to create our digital assistant Aura and put it into our system. And today, I, I would like just to refresh what we've been doing the last year and sharing some thoughts about the, the world in, in which we are getting into with artificial intelligence and cognitive services. Because the last three years has been amazing. We've been uh, in a period in which artificial intelligence is uh, getting to the human parity in a lot of aspects. And that means that artificial intelligence is uh, doing things better than the human in things that normally we attribute only to, to humans. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about all this stuff. And in the end, I'm going to explain what are the living apps, which is something that we created on top of our strategy. So this is the, the first slide. This is, uh, this is the slide that I've been using the last, uh, in the last conferences that, that I deliver here. And it's the a slide that I received to, to work as a chief data officer in Telefonica. The first day, someone gave me this slide and said, do it. And as you can see, it's very clear what I need to do into, what I needed to do into Telefonica. Well, it's, a, it's not an architecture, it's just an explanation. It's just a, a, a graph to explain what wanted to be done into Telefonica, and the idea is quite simple. We have infrastructure into Telefonica, we have the network, we have the IT, we have the, the products and services, devices, the network, the, the IoT and sensor, et cetera, and we needed to transform Telefonica with new capabilities. We needed people to un, uh, that understand uh, the data, so we started to create groups with data analysts, then we tried to automate systems and to create automatic tools, democratizing the access to the insights that can be generated through big data and machine learning algorithms. So once that you have that, the idea is that into Telefonica we will be able to do things internally to optimize our services, which is the, the, the first one on the top left. Then creating new services that we can provide to our customers. Then give to customers the the capability of uh, managing everything which is related to Telefonica in an easy way, which is Aura. The idea in the center is Aura. And the uh, right part is how to create technology for institutions, uh, companies, etc., which is Luca, is the big data and artificial intelligence into Telefonica. And the last part is how to open this platform, this four platform to third party and create an ecosystem, which is what we are going to talk uh, today. So in a nutshell, if you've been listening at any time, what is the for platform in Telefonica? The, at the beginning, nobody knew what the hell was the for platform. So I needed to explain to the executive in Telefonica in an easy way, what is the for platform? So I create something very, very, very complex to explain to them. And I created this video, which is only two minutes, and it's focused to explain to top executive what is the Ford platform into Telefonica. As you know, Telefonica possesses a wide range of technologies, services, and applications. Our three main platforms are different from country to country, and this involves a great complexity. Each of these platforms is generating data, but each one uses its own data models and manages the data in a different way. It's as if each one is speaking its own language. And this doesn't seem very efficient for a data-centric company, does it? 
With the digitalization work that we've done on these three platforms in the recent years, we've achieved an ecosystem of very robust platforms that offer excellent digital services. But this isn't enough. Our clients are asking for even more. In order to achieve the speed and agility that our clients are demanding, it's important that all our technology within Telefonica speaks the same data language. By this, we mean that each piece of data, uh, be it a client's name or physical identifier, an antenna's signal, or the position of a mobile device connected to our network is stored and processed in exactly the same way in every part of the group. To do this, we've been working with big data teams to build the fourth platform, a layer that allows the whole group to speak the same language. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about the fourth platform, but I do want to talk about two of its fundamental parts. Firstly, the unified reference model, the URM. This is the data model with which we store exactly the same information in exactly the same way around the world. But as well as agreeing on how we store the data, we also have to decide how we'll use it. And the common model for working with this data is what we call the fourth platform's API. When we incorporate these pieces, the URM and the API, into all our services, products, and applications, we'll all be speaking the same data language. But what impact does this have? Having built this common layer, we're now capable to build on top of it technology and applications that work globally. And by working globally, we mean that you can build it once and then they work everywhere across the Telefonica group. You don't have to reinvent the wheel each time, which gives us agility. At an internal level, we can develop things that allow us to generate efficiencies. For example, analytical models that allow us to better manage our network and its deployment, or a churn prediction system. And for our clients, we're able to build things that revolutionize the way we interact with them. For example, services such as our new global app and smart Wi-Fi or even something as innovative as an artificial intelligence. In summary, in order to offer our clients the agility they expect from us at a global level and to truly be a data-centric company, we need to speak the same language of data across Telefonica. In order to achieve this, each new product, service, or app that we make in the future has to be built on the same common Telefonica language. That's to say that it incorporates the full platform's URM and API. This is what allows us to build technology solutions just once and use them globally, solutions that generate internal efficiencies and revolutionize the way we interact with our clients, such as Aura and our new global app. What? Well, this is the, this is the video. It was easy to understand. That is in, in a nutshell what we, we, we've been working on the last three years. We started with that idea, and today the four platform is a reality in, in 10 countries. Uh, we have more than 178 million mobile uh, lines uh, with normalized data, we have more than 70 solutions based on the four platforms. One of them is Aura, and the rest of, of them are smart pricing, our network planner, our, and, and our global app, smart Wi-Fi, uh, secure network, anti-phishing solution, etc. And more than 55, 55 uh, APIs, families to, uh, to do things. And the idea is quite simple. We create the global technology and it's connected to the four platform API, and in each country, if they have different systems, it doesn't matter. They need to connect their systems to the four platform uh, uh, gateway, so for us, it's completely transparent. That allows us to create technology uh, faster than we were doing before, and one of the technologies that we created is Aura. Aura is launched in nine countries, and in, in, in every country, is uh, connected to different uh, channels. For instance, in Brazil, it's connected to the contact center, it's connected to WhatsApp, it's connected to the global app. In other countries like Spain, it's connected to Movistar Home, which is our smart display slash phone that we are connecting in to, to TV. We have Aura in social networks, in website, etc. So today, Aura is starting to, to grow in, in all the country uh, quickly because people love to use artificial intelligence. So when we are starting to, to think about uh, using natural language to, as a common interface to all our technology, it was a little complex because at that time, cognitive services were not so, so ready to be used in, in corporates. And 
we needed to, 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 to take a lot of decisions. So we had decisions about how to create a, an artificial intelligence, and we needed to, to take decisions like the gender, the, if we wanted to have a physical appearance or not, uh, if it should be useful, ration, rational, or fun. One of the things that people ask the most is, can Aura tell, uh, tell a, a joke to anyone? And we used to say, look for a friend. So Aura is for helping you to do things in, into Telefonica. That was the idea of creating Aura. And we started to use Aura before the cognitive intelligence was completely ready to take that decision, the cognitive services that we were using. And one of the things that it was challenging for us is that today it's easy to use cognitive uh, services to, to recognize uh, the language, to recognize an intent. But when you look for small details, things are not very well. So one simple technology like War, which is widely used in everywhere, if you use Microsoft Word in Spanish, there are more than 7,500 7, uh, 7, words that are Spanish words that are in the dictionary, but were uh, recognized, uh, recognized then as a mistake, which is very bad. And in, in Google, we have exactly the same problem. So be, be, because of that, we started to work with the uh, Real Academia de la Lengua in Spain, and also with Google, Microsoft, uh, um, Amazon, uh, Facebook, and Twitter to create a project that we, is called Leia, and the idea is how to speed up the usage of Spanish in all cognitive services that we are using today in our technologies. So we have this problem, but when you started, if you start to work with cognitive services, there are a lot of problems that today we need to face. So another one is the sentiment analysis. It's very easy to to use a sentiment analysis to recognize if someone that, has in, that, that is interacting with your technology is angry, is upset, is sad, is happy, whatever. But the truth is that the technology in Spanish is not really at all. So in this example, which is a cognitive services to recognize the sentiment analysis, you can see just exactly the same sentence, but with a comma, and it's not a comma a very big, uh, uh, a comma of very big importance is just a comma to create a pause. Is changing completely the the sentiment. In one side, para él aquello no era un problema difícil. Él era un hacker. Is positive, and the other, and, and on the right, just removing a comma, which is just for a pause, is not changing the meaning at all the sentiment analysis is completely different, it's negative. So the technology is still not ready for, for spanning. Of course, we have a lot of bias in all the technologies, in all the cognitive services that we are using. One of them is quite simple, is gender bias in, in Google Translation, and you can use some expressions like, is a scientist, is a nurse, is an engineer, is a secretary, and, uh, and the, the model that they are using for the translation service, which is a, an, a cognitive uh, service, is selecting the gender because of the bias. So it's a scientific, it's a male, it's a nurse, it's a female, it's an engineer, it's male, it's a secretary, it's a female, which is not good if you uh, are planning to use this technology in a regular base uh, application. Because of that, and I would like to, to explain this always because I'm putting an example with Google. Google is working hard in trying to remove that because in the end artificial intelligence is learning from the data and we have the bias in the data. So we need to, to understand when an artificial intelligence has been learning with bias. Had created this technology that I, I really like it, which is te testing with concept activation vectors. And the idea is understand what are the vectors that triggers one decision uh, taken by, a, uh, by a artificial intelligence. And in that, these examples is, are very clear. In the left side, Shibra, 
stripes, horse, and savanna on the right side. A doctor is white coat, a stethoscope, a male. So in the right side, we, we can discover that one artificial intelligence that is used in artificial vision as a cognitive services is learning with bias, and we need to take care of this bias if we want to create technology in a professional way. So another thing that scares me a little is that we are starting to to use cognitive services to recognize people, to recognize everybody. This is quite, quite interesting. This is the natural language uh, recognition for, uh, for Google also. And the idea is that you can type uh, any expression and it recognizes not only the sentiment analysis, et cetera, but also who are in the sentence. So in this example, I, I wrote a uh, sentence which says, Chema Alonso was choked by Chuck Norris because we did uh, a picture together one year ago. And putting that expression, Google is able to recognize that Chema Alonso is me, which is in the Wikipedia in Spanish, and Chuck Norris is Mr. Chuck Norris, and is in the Wikipedia in the, in the States. So it recognizes you very well just by the name, just by the name. But if you go to artificial vision, the thing is a little worse. For instance, today we have artificial vision, which is recognizing almost anyone uh, quickly. Right now, it's only available for celebrities. Of course, it's me on it. This is an example of one picture. Uh, here we have a Mexican actor. It's me, and it recognized me with 99% of accuracy, even without the beanie hat. And Paco Prieto with 94.2%, uh, but Paco Lobaton is old fashioned. It's not, <laughs> it's not a celebrity for the artificial intelligence today. And it's quite nice uh, because you can try different tricks. We exchange things with Kevin Mechnick, which is the most uh, famous hacker on, the, uh, on Earth, uh, I let my beanie hat, and I was using his uh, glasses, and it, the artificial intelligence also recognized us very well. And this is scary, because this is today, but in three years, probably, it will recognize everyone around the world, because the artificial intelligence today has available data of your faces everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, no, WhatsApp is, is encrypted. The problem with this is that today we, we've been developing also uh, high resolution cameras, and I really love it. You can go online and see a demo. This is an example here. This is a picture, one single picture, one single picture from a high res camera. It's a, you can see the city here, and you can say, okay, I want to Zoom, for instance, here, go, 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 and if everything goes well and I have internet connection, you can see the picture of people that are all around. So in the future, with one single picture, one high-res camera, all of you are going to be recognized everywhere, everywhere, which is something that probably we need to decide as a society if we want this or not. But the truth is that technology is also ready. And it's not perfect, as I said before. In the cognitive services, I was showing you some examples uh, in which cognitive uh, intelligence is not working perfectly. But I have one more that I really love, like it, which is, which is the next one. The idea with, with the, the cognitive services is that you can train a cognitive services. I can train my own cognitive services. And depending on the data, it will learn on a different way. So every artificial intelligence that we are creating is based in the training of the cognitive services that we are putting into. So this is an example with Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper is on the right. You sure? <laughs> the artificial intelligence is telling you 
which one is, is, is Alice Cooper and which one is me, because you, you can see the rectangle. Uh, the idea is that I publish uh, this picture, uh, in, with, uh, and one of my friends uh, texts me through WhatsApp with a joke that I've been supporting the last 10 years, that is that I look like um, George Clooney. Do you think that I look like George Clooney at some point? Well, I was upset, so I decided to test it with artificial intelligence, with cognitive services. So there is a cognitive services in Microsoft Azure in which you can upload two pictures, and the artificial intelligence tells you if uh, people on both pictures are the same or not. Quite simple. So I upload that picture with one George Clooney picture, and in verification it says, the two faces belong to different people, which is normal, we are different people. But confidence is only 44%. And if you uh, rise to 50, it's the same person. So I tested with Richard Pryor on the right, and as you can see, we are not the same, <laughs> same person. So, so I decided to look for another picture, trying to look like George Clooney. So I looked for one picture that I, uh, that I have from three years ago, when I was in, four years ago, when I was in the executive committee of Telefonica. We needed to do a Photoshop session, and they did it two different pictures, one with the beanie hat and another one with, uh, without the beanie hat. They needed to decide if my picture in Telefonica should be with the beanie hat or without the beanie hat. In the end, we did a data-driven decision, so we <laughs> asked everyone, and in the end, they decide to use the beanie hat picture. If you go to Telefonica XCOM uh, website, you can see my picture with the beanie hat. But there is another picture that is also available to download, which is without the beanie hat. So in that picture, which is that, as you can see, the beanie hat changed completely your appearance. In this picture, using that picture of George Clooney, the artificial intelligence said that two faces belong to the same person, which is bad for me if at some point George Clooney commits a crime that is captured by a high-resolution camera and use an artificial intelligence who ha which had been trained with this data. Because it's Azure. So I thought, OK, it doesn't make sense. Because I've been using the artificial intelligence for celebrities, which is also from Microsoft. But the training is completely different. So if, we, if uh, you upload both pictures to the other artificial intelligence, to the other cognitive services, which is training with a different set of data, they recognize your Clooney and it recognizes me on a different way. So we are facing things, we are facing uh, issues with artificial intelligence and especially with cognitive services that we need to think before use it uh, widely. And of course, Artificial intelligence is recognizing you very well, so today it's very easy to create a fake person, a fake artificial intelligence, which is, uh, which is going to look like you, which is going to act like you, which is going to speak like you, but it's not you. We did a training with an artificial intelligence using technology, which is an artificial intelligence that recognized me, and another artificial intelligence trying to, to generate pictures of me which are which, which is not me so on the right on the left side is enrique which is one of my colleagues and he is using artificial vision from the camera which is recognizing the gestures all the things and on the right side is an artificial intelligence recreating me in real time to have a video conference to to do an skype to ask for uh, increase of salary to do whatever and of course this could, be, this could be very dangerous because, of course, you can pretend to be a 16 years girl, or you can pretend to be a 14 years boy, or whatever. Or you can pretend to be the CEO of your company and order a wire transfer to the bank. So 
this technology had been used for crimes, but this, this had been done one year ago. We did this one year ago in a computer, in a laptop. Uh, and uh, today, have, probably you have been, you've been uh, watching a lot of videos with deep fakes or whatever. The technology is almost perfect. And the idea is a cognitive intelligence that recognizes you very well and another uh, cognitive intelligence trying to, uh, to bypass the, uh, the, the previous one. So every time, this technology is saying, it's not Chema, it's not Chema, it's not Chema, until it learns how to create a real Chema that fakes this, uh, this previous technology. So they are training themselves to create that, that new reality. But the truth is that we face a lot of uh, issues, but people love to use cognitive services. People love to use cognitive uh, um, uh, artificial intelligence to interact. So last year, the trends in 2018, people love video. More than 50% 50, uh, 50 of people use chatbots, chatbots to interact uh, with customers a day. 40% of, uh, of internet had been using on, on TV. So everything had been changing. And probably you, if you go to a taxi and you get into and ask for an address, probably the taxi driver is going to use the mic to talk to the GPS to introduce the, the, the address of your destination, because people love it. So <clears throat> we started to work how to democratize this and how to use it both sides for internal purposes into Telefonica and for our customers. So the first thing that we did it is let's to create an, a, quite an, a quite service to create in real time artificial intelligence chatbots with with uh, facts, etc. So we created this, which is Luca Artificial Intelligence Wizard. The idea is that it's a website, it's a wizard. You go, type the questions, type the answers, type the different utterances that you want to, to add. And once that you select the icon, in, in my example is a, is a beanie hat, you just publish it, you, and you receive a QR, a QR code, and uh, HTML code that you can in, in, uh, embed it in your website. So this is one technology that we created. And I explain in this because I put it in production in my, in my blog, which is here. So this is my blog, my personal blog. So here on the bottom right, you, you can see a beanie hat. Can you see? And you can ask things to my Chema bot, whatever. For instance, you can say, que es un hacker? And click for it. And well, in this case, the answer is a short video, because you can put uh, videos, pictures, text, whatever you think. It's a, a, a quick technology to generate artificial intelligence. For instance, we use it with the QR code to put it in in shops or in posters or whatever. You have a movie, you can put the QR code, whatever, uh, whoever with a smartphone can type things. One, I have a list of things that people ask to my bot and you don't want to know it. <laughs> and one of the things, of course, one of the things that they ask is, do you have hair under your beanie hat? Uh, what is a hacker? What is your salary? Whatever. <laughs> So quite interesting. But on the other hand, we wanted to use it internally. So I was in Telefonica, and I wanted to use artificial intelligence in all uh, our products and services. And one of the places in which people use the most uh, voice is at home. Because if you are in a train, or you are in a taxi, or you are in a Starbucks, you don't want to be uh, managing technology by voice. You want to be some privacy. You are not going to, to ask some things to publicly on, on, a, on a public environment. But at home, it's very common, the usage of voice. So we wanted to join that trend. We wanted to put natural language technology with cognitive services 
in our technology. And in Spain, Telefonica is the first technology provider at home. We have 6.5 million of, uh, of um, internet connection. We have 4.5 million of uh, houses with uh, fiber, Wi-Fi, and pay TV. We have Wi-Fi routers. We have pay TV over the top with Movistar Plus Little. We have uh, Movistar Home, which is our smart screen with slash phone. We have a lot of devices, but not all, only devices, but also services. We have carrier billing, we have cybersecurity, we have uh, um, home insights, etc. Et so we decided to join both things and create a, a more innovative uh, portfolio of services at home. And this is something that Telefonica had been doing the all the all the history in the in 1978 we were just uh, commercializing uh, wireline phones but then we moved to internet service provider in 1995 we created infovia which is one service that democratized internet access in this country at that time spain was the first country in europe with internet connections. People connected to internet, thanks to Infobia, Spain was number one at that time. In 1998, in 1999, we developed uh, the ADCL service with one router with Wi-Fi. That Wi-Fi service today is the most spread Wi-Fi service in, in Spain. In 2003, paid TV, and we created Fusion. In, those, in 2014, we bought we acquired Movistar Plus, Canal, Canal Plus, and we created this platform of, pay, uh, of TV content. And in 2018, we started to create new services at home, like Aura, Movistar Home, Conexión Segura, which is the security from the router that you can enjoy for free if you are a Movistar customer. One question, hands up, which is not a Telefonica customer. Please abandon the room immediately. <laughs> And in 2009, actually two weeks ago, we launched uh, Movistar Living Apps. And the idea of these Living Apps was quite simple. We have a lot of devices. We have um, a set of box that controls TV. We have the Wi-Fi router. We have the Movistar uh, Home. We have the wireline phone. We have the remote. We have IoT things, etc. And it's like more or less like a computer. We have the screen, we have the uh, operating system, which is Aura connected to Movistar Plus. We have uh, in, in interfaces for voice with the mic, with the mouse, which is the remote, with, with arrows to, to move through the, through the option. We have apps connected to the system. We have internet connection. We have content. We have, it's like a computer. So we started to put all the, all the pieces together and create something that we call internally home as a computer to create an architecture that joins all things that we have in, at, at the home. And once that we have that created, it's like a, a computer. Probably you remember when years ago, the Amstrad, the Spectrum, you turn on the computer, and that's it. If you wanted to run anything, you just say run the name of the program, and the program takes control of the interface, the keyboard, the mouse, the screen, etc. So that was the idea that we have with the living apps. So how create, how are going to create a platform to run digital experiences at home using cognitive, uh, cognitive services and artificial intelligence? And we did this. So the idea is that we have right now this platform, which is connected in, in to the four platform. If you remember the first slide in which I was talking about the open APIs for third parties to create technology on the four platform. So the idea is that we have connected all devices that our customers have at uh, they, uh, their houses to the four platform. We collect data. We have APIs to do things 
into the devices. We control TV, we control the Wi-Fi router, we control the wireline phone, we control the services that we provide at home, and we can integrate third party. We've been integrating on this platform several companies uh, so far. For instance, we integrated Netflix, which is integrated in our set of box. We integrated Twitter, which is integrated in Movistar Home. We integrated um, Iberia, Air Europa, and Atletico de Madrid as living apps. We developed our own living apps to run experiences at, at, at home to control all services. And we are working with all of them today and speeding up to announce a lot of them in the next Mobile World Congress. But the idea is quite simple. We have the four platform. We have the devices. The devices are connected to the four platform. There is a common interface, which is Aura. Aura is a cloud-based cognitive intelligence, which is created in, in Microsoft Azure. We are leveraging of uh, Microsoft Azure cognitive services. So the customer interact to Aura using different devices. For instance, the voice, uh, the voice remote or remote with Mick, which is going to be launched this month, or one app with Aura which you can uh, talk to, or the old-fashioned remote. With the old-fashioned remote, you go to TV, and there is an option which says apps. And you, can you are talking to Aura through a different interface. And of course, if you have Movistar Home, you have Touch and Mick or whatever, and webcam also. So once that you connect devices, you have the interaction to the, to the four platform. If at some point one of the customers says, OK, Aura, open whatever application, then the app takes control of the home as a computer, that platform, and it can create different experiences. So this is the look like if you are a, a Movistar plus a customer right now, you have the app section in which you can run the apps. And this is an example that we created with Europa. The idea is that we don't want to migrate the mobile app or the website of the company to the living room. We just want to create experiences that deserve to be enjoyed in the living room. So in this case, they are, they created, we created together but the idea is coming from then, is an experience in which someone at some point is having a discussion with, with their partner and say, okay, long time ago, we're not going on a trip. And you say, okay, Aura, pause Netflix, and then you pause the movie, and you say, okay, Aura, open Air Europa, and then you just ask for a trip randomly. So this is the experience. Ok, Aura, abre Air Europa. Ok, Aura, quiero volar en diciembre un fin de semana por menos de 200 euros. Ok, Aura, quiero ver la oferta. Ok, Aura, quiero llamar para contratar. Bienvenido al servicio Aura de Europa. Well, that's the idea, just different experiences for third party. Today you can have extra content for, from Atletico de Madrid, for instance, in the living app, before the match, after the match, in the middle of the week, interviews, whatever. You can do similar things to with Iberia, and we are working with a lot of companies. But believe me, doing this in a telco, it wasn't easy. Today it looks very easy, think that we did our plan bearing staff three years ago with the four platform, normalizing data and creating the APIs. And once that you have the data and you have the APIs, the APIs you can do a lot of things. This is the Atletico de Madrid. This is another example. Ok, know. Aura, quiero ver la entrevista. 
Quiero mandar un saludo a todos los amigos de Movistar que me están viendo a través de la aplicación de Atlético de Madrid. Well, that's the idea. Just using artificial intelligence in the core services of a company like Telefónica and take the most of the cognitive services, taking care of the issues that we are facing. You need to analyze carefully what is going to do your artificial intelligence and how every single cognitive service you are using works and create the best experiences for your customers. And that's all. Thank you very much for your time.